while we're on this topic of racism, let's just speak honestly with us today about the race issues in America. I think, okay, so you're black, I'm white. Ironically, uh, most people don't know this, but I was born and raised in East Africa. I mean, I was a clear minority there. And yeah. until I came to the States to go to college, uh, you know, all my friends, everybody practically that I knew was black. Uh, but there is no denying that there are times, have been times in our history, and even in some communities today where racism is very real, uh, yep. uh, among various ethnic populations. But is it improving, and is race really the issue that enables opportunity or lack of it in today's society? I'm, I'm gonna say something that if you give me a second to think about it, you're gonna realize that it's actually true. Okay. Racism, is and has always been irrelevant. The only thing that matters is racial discrimination. Racism is a thought and a feeling. It's, it doesn't matter. It only matters if you do something um, that, hurts, that hurts the race that you dislike. So Martin Luther King didn't care about racism. The feeling, the thought can be resolved when people work together and they gain respect for each other. Exactly. Right? What, 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 what the early civil rights movement focused on was racial discrimination specifically legal racial discrimination, mm -hmm. right? What you did to enact that, that, that racism in a society. And, and we can fix that with laws. Yep. So we can fix racial discrimination, but we can't fix racism. So that's the first delineation that I make. The second delineation that I make is that what people think of, what people often call racism is not racism. And, and I'll give you a, a, a term, um, drachtomania. Have you ever heard this word? No. Drachtomania was in the DSM, the book that records all the mental illnesses. Okay. And it is a condition whereby a slave wants to escape to freedom. Okay. And there was a treatment prescribed. Um, first, you have to look at the symptoms. He was melancholy for no reason at all, not happy with his work, and not talkative um, with his workmates. The prescription, the medical prescription was to quote, beat the devil out of him, mm -hmm. right? So when we look in the past, at the, the view that one race has with another is often governed by the needs of those in power, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. During the age of enlightenment, it was taught that from evolutionary science, it was absolute that blacks could not achieve a working equality with whites and that by evolution, we were predetermined to be slaves. And we even had a mental diagnosis to fix the problem of a slave wanting to be free, okay? So this idea that there were a bunch of white people hating black people 150 years ago just isn't true. They thought it was settled science. There was consensus in the science that said Blacks could not do X, Y, and Z, okay? They even asked the question, um, the question was often asked because if it wasn't true, you have plantations with a hundred blacks and four whites, why don't they just re rebel? And what happened was there were three rebellions in the, mid, um, in the mid 1800s leading up to the civil war and it would Nat Turner's rebellion. And that was the true, one of the true impetuses to the civil war, whites, and the North said, oh, Blacks really don't want to be slaves because these rebellions are popping up all over the place. People don't realize that a person sitting 100, 1,000 miles away from a slave only understands slavery through the lens of media. Yeah, yeah. Right? They have no direct experience mm -hmm. and there's not enough interaction in their lives for them to care to have an opinion. So they tend to accept the opinion of the media of their day. There was never a time when the majority of whites hated Blacks. It, it just didn't happen. And we have to remember, when we look at the racism of the past, whites had opinions based on what they were taught. Right. Blacks had opinions based on what they were taught. It was not an emotional or some natural or guttural thing to where whites and Blacks don't like each other, right? Yeah. Frederick Douglass, Abraham Lincoln was questioned. He, he wanted the freedom of slaves but he questioned if slaves 
could take care of themselves and work towards equality in the economy. In those days, it was called the People's House and it was open. Frederick Douglass made it a point to visit the president on a regular basis. And it was because the president saw the intellectual ability of Frederick Douglass that he finally became convinced yeah. that it was time for the war and that Blacks could, given time, achieve social and economic equality. So, so that's kind of the history. So if we go to today, right, you have to ask yourself, the entire population was controlled back then. Science is often political, right? Just like anything, we can set conditions to, to get the conclusions that we right. want. Exactly, right? yep. So science is a process. Science doesn't actually say anything. Science yeah. is a process, it's a method. Yeah. It, yeah. You know, it always changes. Um, you know, so, so, so when I look at modern racism, I look at, I look at, we create it in the stories that we tell. We create it in the yeah. narratives that we embrace. Right? You put small children together, they don't know about it, they don't care. Right? right? But at some point in time, we're learning these things. And we learn it, look at the the the, the Floyd situation. Right. Um there's a narrative about black America that is out there that blacks believe, almost everyone believes. I'm pretty sure you believe it. But 78% of blacks aren't poor. Yeah. <laughs> right and, uh, so 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 if, if 78 80 percent of blacks aren't poor but our narrative in the media is always about the inner cities it's always yeah. about the kids on the street it's always about the high unemployment rate among blacks what they need to say is the high unemployment rate among blacks in urban areas mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. um they talk about the low graduation rates of of blacks in the inner city they don't talk about the fact that the white people that live there also have low Right. Uh, graduation rates. It's so the dialogue gives us a false impression, and we all spend our time talking about something that actually isn't real. Yeah. You know, I, I look at the COVID situation in New York. I came out of that. So did everyone else came. Most people came out feeling that the, that COVID crisis was as severe as it was in New York City when we had those daily briefings. Right. That set the tone for the entire pandemic. And what we didn't realize was that a full third of the cases across the country were clustered there in that part of the country yeah. and that most people's were not affected as much see what i'm saying sure. it's the narrative sure so the reality of it is, is that we live in a post-racial society and the reason why we know we live in a post-racial society is because the media has to keep telling us that we're not if you go pre-1968 back during the time of segregation et cetera et cetera you know, the media didn't have to tell people that we lived in a racial society. It, 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 it was in front of us. We woke up, we looked around, you know, we went to lunch counter. I couldn't sit down. You could. No one had to sell us on it. We knew it was there. In fact, we knew it so well that in the 1960s, we could write laws to abolish it. Well, we wrote those laws and we abolished it. And we've made progress, given those numbers I showed you before about poverty, right? that's going down for every group over the last 50 years. So in order to maintain a system of control of our minds, they have to tell us that no, we live in systemic racism, but in their version, they have to use the boogeyman rule. You know, when your kid wakes up and there's a boogeyman in the closet and when he stares at the shadow, the shadow moves, so he knows it's alive, but the shadow jumps around. I mean, when you turn the light on, it's gone, but he's like, but it's really there. So you have to turn the light off. The way we look at things, like CRT basically says, the boogeyman is real. Let's form a science around boogeyman behavior. And that's how they pull the wool over our eyes about racism. It's the boogeyman. You can't touch it. You can't isolate it. You can't work with it. You can't eradicate it. You can't do anything. But it's there because we told you it's there. 